Welcome back to another another episode of Show Up with Sarah. I am here with Mark Burke, who I have known, as we were just discussing, for gosh darn, like, 20 years. Um, he played volleyball at George Mason University. Well, he played, where did you play before that? Delaware, right? Yeah, I played at University of Delaware. Man, look at this, still trap this brain. <laughs> um, and then he transferred to George Mason, where uh, I don't think enough people know and I do not own enough that I was a division one volleyball setter. So uh, that's where we met one another. And now he he started his own business mm -hmm. in the volleyball space. And that's why I want to bring him on because because it's super dope. Welcome to the show, Mark Burke. How are you doing? Thanks, Yips. Good, good to see you. Nice to see <laughs> your smiling face again. Um, it's so I was just talking to someone about how it's really hard to keep track of how often you talk to someone because you're so in the loop of in general of what they're doing with their life because of like Facebook and Instagram so mm -hmm. you're like oh yeah there they are they're doing it they're killing it I saw them yesterday doing it killing it whatever but then when you actually sit down and talk I mean obviously this isn't even in person so it's like when's the last time I saw you in person I don't even know uh so maybe 17 years ago uh I mean, I don't know, that feels aggressive. Did we see each other ever after college? I mean, I feel like I've been in a, in, in LA a, a chunk of times. I had to have seen you at least once then. I mean, maybe not because I've seen Joyner a number of times out there. Oh, okay. But maybe not you. I mean, you you are you were very busy. You gallivanted a lot and <laughs> and then you started business. And then, you know what? No, I know. I was supposed to potentially stay at your volleyball house. Oh yeah, and then and then I and I did not, and I have no clue why I didn't. So yeah, anyway, so yes, ago. tell me about like gallivanting, uh, starting the business, getting married. You you, I mean, it's not like you've pressed it all into like two years. Technically, you have had a long amount of time, but like, tell me, yeah. um, tell me, yeah, post college, post college, you want to tell me actually? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was like I went. I did, some people hate this. Some people understand it, but I, I didn't go to college to go to college. Like college to me, getting that education was never a question of whether I would do it. It was always like, yeah, of course, you know, I'm, I'm automatically going to graduate. Um, but for me, it was more about uh, how can I enjoy which, whichever sport I was playing the most, you know? So I, mm -hmm. I went to Delaware for football. A lot of people don't know that. So I was, oh, yeah, the, I was invi that. invited walk on, on the football team. And I chose that over a few other schools because it was the harder path. Like it was a bigger yeah. school than the ones that were inviting me. And I was like, nah, I'll get my ass kicked for two, three years. And then hopefully, you know, earn a starting spot. But then while I was there, I found volleyball again and just like fell in love with it completely and started dishing football. So going, going to Mason was just to play volleyball at the highest level. And it worked out that my major was like loosely connected. I was mm -hmm. studying, um, what was I studying? Fitness management. And uh, they had exercise science, which honestly was more aligned with what I wanted to get into was, was exercise science and Good. went there. And then the whole goal was to play pro, uh, play pro volleyball at the end of that. And I got to do that in a few countries. And then we've gotten to do that for the last I don't know, 10 or 15, who knows, years on the beach. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's been pretty cool to, to watch, like, because I think that for those of us who don't stick with it, it whether it's like joining a, a league or mm -hmm. going professional or whatever, it volleyball just keeps feeling like a whole like lifetime ago. And it's, you start to disconnect with the athlete that like you really were like, it's crazy when sometimes I, I will work out and I'm like, you know, on it and intense. And I'm like, freaking, how did I, how did I ever do this before? But I'm like, well, <laughs> because I was also playing a sport. I just really enjoyed like there, like yeah. I was, I was, it was practically my job, you know, like, so, okay. So you, you, you move to LA, you decide to what, start doing camps, start doing lessons. Um, how did, because what you're doing now from what I'm understanding is a pretty big deal. And, you know, like you, I mean, at one point, I don't know if you still do, but you had the volleyball house, like people travel in from 
from around the world to train with you and to do lessons with you. You do camps, you do individual stuff. You you still are playing. Yeah. Um, it's pretty significant. It is. Uh, the business that we have now is the way that I studied it and started embracing different things. I kind of took on like six or seven different businesses you know, and kind of like different industries or ways of applying it or, or enjoying or teaching beach volleyball. And I created all of them. So each one is kind of growing slowly. Whereas I think if I had focused on just one of them and just crushed it hard, I, I probably would have been in a better financial situation, like faster. Um, yeah. But now, I mean, there are so many branches of it growing which is which is pretty cool and we got a, we got a small team but i going back to the beginning i was i think i was born a coach man like for real when i was 13 i started coaching sports you know so when people when i'm like on my website a few years ago i was like been coaching sports for over 20 years and people were like you're 35 there's no way you've been coaching sports and i'm like actually i have you know like my yeah. first jobs were summer camps for little tykes and uh, a tennis instructor and so that taught me how to coach. And I found out that I loved coaching and I loved, I had three older brothers, right? So I loved the idea of getting to be a big brother for somebody else. Cause I didn't have yeah. any little brothers and I don't know, maybe it goes back to my childhood. I'll let a psychiatrist figure that one out. But, <laughs> um, and then when I went to go play overseas, while I was playing overseas, I get a bunch of coaching opportunities. Some of them I forced, I was like, you need to give me a coaching job because I never thought that being an athlete actually gave anything to the world. Yeah. You know, when people are just sitting there watching you play and I was talking yeah. with this about somebody else in a car yesterday, a long car ride. And it's like, the only, the only good thing you do for the world when you play sports in front of people is you, you offer inspiration. You know, mm. um, people can see you chasing your dream, see you accomplish a goal. And maybe by watching you, that gives them the courage to try it themselves. But yeah. to me, that was never enough. I wanted an actual hand in people's journey and in, in, in helping them. And so, yeah, we started off after working for a few different vacation companies and like having, I was a personal trainer in college, you know, yeah. uh, I, when I decided to play beach volleyball full-time, came back to the States from playing overseas. And I was like, well, beach volleyball is not going to pay on its own. Like you need to start something on the side of it. And so I wanted to create a place for people like me, a kid from New York who wanted to go to California to like make it in volleyball. I wanted to create a place that invited them instead of you show up and you have to just search and beg people to be on your court and all that. I was like, nope. I'm going to create something where it's one click. You have your coach, you have your accommodation, and I will connect you with everybody at your level and, and we'll do it like that. And it went really well. And then more people just asked for local classes and then um, bigger camps and clinics. And then I was like, man, if I'm coaching all of this and I can only coach or each of our coaches can only coach like 12 people at a time. I was like, I could spend that same hour or two hours making a video, throwing it on YouTube and coach yep. thousands with one hour, you know? And now we've got, I think like well over uh, 5 million views on our, on our YouTube okay, channel. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, we did it. And we yeah. got blogs <laughs> and there's, it's, it's a whole big company, but, but essentially we help people get better beach volleyball, whether they're a coach, a player, or they just want to go for an awesome vacation. You just reminded me of something I saw on Instagram yesterday where this guy like walks around and he asks su successful people, um, you know, like what, how, if someone wanted to make money this year, what would oh, they do? Like, like where he know, stops them in their like Lamborghini and he's like, yeah. Hey, well, uh, I always wonder how yeah. staged those are. You know? <laughs> um, well, yeah, especially cause I'm like half of the people don't look like they're not wearing anything that's fancy. So like how on earth would you be like, that person is rich, right? Um, but the one person that I saw yesterday, she said, you know, you, it's not about like, how do I make money? And like, what do I like? How Yeah, like, how do I make money? How do I like get into a business? It's what problem needs to be solved? Mm. And then how do I just solve it? Right. And so yeah. you specifically just said, like, you know, 
here, here's all the hoops that you have to jump through if you are someone that's coming from out of state or out of area, um, which is super fair because half of it, I mean, I, I played in college and whenever I look at, like there's a park that's nearby where every weekend it's just volleyball nets and, and, and it's a couple leagues, I think, uh, play at the same time. And even I like feel intimidated going and being like, hey, can I, can I play with you guys? I used to you do know, this. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like I, my hands are, I don't know, probably crap, but you know, like, and so I can only imagine someone who does not have that type of experience, what that, I mean, that's a monumental, like overwhelmed type of situation. Oh yeah. It's so there, scary to, to try to join a new community and like figure out how to, what, what we did with kids literally say, Hey, do you want to play with me? Yeah. Like, kids did that. And they still do that in like kindergarten and first grade. Like, will you be my friend? Uh, and one of my best friends now, he said out loud at one of our practices, he was taking one of our classes and he's like, man, it's just so hard to make friends as an adult. And I think he was like 37 at the time. I was like, yeah, dude, you're right. It is. And right yeah. after that practice, um, I was like, Hey, you want to go grab a beer? And we've been having beers ever since. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, sure. like it was cool, <laughs> but you, for a lot of people, they don't have that courage to just walk up to a group of people or, or somebody and, and the people that they know that they would like to be involved with uh, and, and open it or, or bust down that door themselves. So it's nice to have somebody hold your hand and be like, here, join this class. Yeah, Sarah. Yeah. This is Paul. You guys are going to yes. be partners. And you know what? You two, uh, you're actually both in finance and business. So you might have something to talk about, you know? So it's nice to have uh, bridge builders, I guess. Yeah, no, it absolutely is. Like by the time that this, episode will come out I will already be there but I'm moving to Chicago at the end of the month and yeah and so a I mean whenever who whomever I have told already they're like well do you know anybody and I'm like yeah actually I do and they're like oh that's good. and then it just makes me laugh because I like so moving from DC to Denver I didn't know anybody here and I remember how I was like oh, how am I gonna meet anybody but then it was way more easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, and then, I mean, everybody jokes now that I'm just, I just meet people everywhere because I just talk incessantly until people are my friend. But it's funny now to think about going somewhere where I do know someone and it's like, oh, I don't even have to worry about that. You know? <laughs> um, but to, to, to add to the, the greatness of volleyball, the people I know are primarily all volleyball people, which... Yeah. You're like, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter where we go. Like if I know someone through Mason, volleyball, whatever, it's like, oh, we, well, you have to be my friend. And it just feels right. like they're going to be like, yeah, of course. Like, you know, um, okay. So that's one of the great parts about sports, right? It's, yeah. I mean, sports and, and, and hobbies, I won't just say sports, but hobbies where you have to be there in person, they are social connectors, they're community builders. You know, so you get to make friends and make a community and do things and accomplish things just because you at least have that one thing in common that knocks down the barrier from zero to something. And that's the yeah. biggest barrier is like that first step is always the biggest step that you need to take and, and probably the scariest. And after that, it's, I'm not going to say it's like walking down steps, you know, <laughs> you're not like carrying momentum, but it's definitely the hardest one to start. I mean, that's why I have. 8,000 dogs, you know, everybody will always stop to pet a dog. <laughs> like, um, so when you starting this business, mm. what was the hardest part of it? Because it's one thing to have an idea. It's one thing to kind of see a path on how to execute, but any person, yeah. any entrepreneur, yeah, we all know at this point, there's always some businessy thing that you're like, oh, I didn't know about that. Or like, oh, F this crap. Like, you know, like, well, did you find, did you run into any of that when you're starting this business? Yeah, I was, everything was impossible. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I like, you know, I, I had um, some followers because I had played pro. So, uh, and I had, yeah, gained some, some sort of small following from that. And yeah. I thought like, Oh, this is fine. I'll just do this. Uh, people will come. I'll just put it on Instagram and Facebook and I've got 5,000 mm -hmm. friends. So, so they'll come, you know, we'd have, we'd have like 
five person camps um and ev every player was at a different level and then you know some of them were like 16 person camps and that was cool but you still had to work that out L yeah. literally for me everything was new and difficult except for coaching coaching i could do it i could nail it and all of the other stuff it was spending hours and hours and hours in podcasts in youtube videos um i i do regret a little bit that i didn't just get a, a coach straight away to just eliminate all the mistakes eliminate all the discovery and say no, just stop just do this right now you know yeah. Yeah. um that would have been nice but i also don't think i would have if i had done that i don't know if i could share that with somebody down the road the same conversation had a great conversation in the car last night uh when you're when you have things easy or handed to you or you're shown a path mm -hmm. you don't necessarily learn enough to be able to sh to share that with the next person mm -hmm. you know so it's like when you have an easy time and you have no difficulties and it's all smooth sailing what the fuck sorry what did you learn you know, you, you can't tell what, what you've learned or what problems there were. So you can't associate or connect with the next person who's had similar problems. I, as a, definitely as an entrepreneur, I think that the biggest thing I've fallen back on is my history with sports mm. because every issue or trial or moment of failure, um, I would say every single time I had to put it into a sports reference mm. um, and like look at it from that perspective, because if I'm like, oh, I mean, I've been, I've been trying everything out. I've been trying. I'm like, Sarah, like, yeah, maybe that's the problem. Like, there's never been a time where you got on the court and you're like, I'm going to try this technique today and then a different technique tomorrow and a different technique on Saturday. And then one of those just has to work right away. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm like that. That's never been a thing you've done. Like you get one technique, you drill it in and you, you, then you go from there, you know, like, or whenever I have been like, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I know what I'm doing and this isn't working and I just suck and whatever. I'm like, dude, we loved practice. Like yeah. preseason was literally my favorite, most favorite time on in all of time. Oh, on yeah. Nothing to do, but play volleyball five hours a day. I, I adored the idea. And I, and it's funny because like talking about it now, I, I haven't actually talked about it in a minute, but there was nothing I loved more than knowing I got like a thousand balls today and I could F up 999 of them. <laughs> and I just got the chance to do it. Like, yeah. this is all I'm here to do, you know, like, but as when we get into business, because it has to do with money and other people and security in life and things like that. I think that we forget so many of those lessons where it, if I could go back, I would have had, cause technically the, the, the business I'm doing now, I only started at the beginning of this year and I did do it better, but before with my personal training business, I wish I would have gone back and just had like a full-time job to take the pressure of money off. Um, mm -hmm. Because I, because it would have given me more of that mental space, like preseason, like but it I didn't wouldn't. have it. No, because then you would, then you would have been worse. Because I, I then you have like... a fallback. It's death ground strategy from like Sun Tzu, the Art of War, where he's like, when you, when your back is against the wall, you will fight harder than you, in any other situation. So that that like pressure that that creates diamonds if you have a fallback then you're going to see like yeah you had that, that other job making you money and making you comfortable and then you would have stopped that business because you'd have been like oh i can see that these two things so you'd have went for something that you didn't love and and provided less i sorry i disagree with you on your podcast like, <laughs> you to well, gotta go through the, the poor times but then I once you learn like okay you know what i was able to do when i had no money now look at what i can do when i have money like right now for the first time we have a financial cushion and i'm like yeah oh man i can hire four people yeah what am i going to do with four people and i just start writing down all of my tasks and everything i do i'm like i'm not i don't want to do that i don't want to i don't want to answer a single email anymore so now i'm just like hey listen you call me. If you have something that needs me, you call me, I'll answer. Not opening emails anymore. Sorry, guys. You know, so yeah. um, I, I think that, well, 
like to to cap off I because I think I think of it in that like preseason space like the reason why I loved having a thousand balls is because I knew I had 999 balls to work the technique through you know what mm-hmm. I mean like mm-hmm. but I do I do I mean I can't I can't necessarily be like well I'm definitely right because I mean I'm still freaking here right like you know I I figured it out yeah. uh and it, and 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 The great thing is that the more I was in the personal training, the more I knew it definitely wasn't what I was doing in like five years, you know, Mm -hmm. like, and so, you know, here I am five years later, I transitioned to what I feel way more passionate about. And I think I'm way better at personal training is great, but like technically anybody, anybody, there are plenty of people who are more educated than I am. Um, But with what you are just saying, it, it reminds me of a post I just did and the conversation I was having with another friend of mine who she's a, a wedding planner and we were discussing the fact that money we people get so hooked up onto money especially new business owners like all you can think of and see is money right because rent whatever but the reality is is that what we're all working toward is freedom and freedom of choice and what you're saying like I just want to be able to delegate the things I just don't want to do like that is a complete like freedom type thing, you know, like what, so how long, if you don't mind sharing, like how long did it take you to really see the business take off in a space where you started being like, okay, like I definitely can do this or I'm, I'm decently comfortable or safe, like financially, um, to be able to keep doing this. Uh, Like five months ago. (laughs) <laughs> like seven eight years um uh shoot well when i moved out to california so i i moved out and i i think i had like two thousand bucks maybe maybe four thousand something like that and so yeah. i started and i rented an apartment a two-bedroom apartment that was more than i had ever spent in rent like i hadn't really paid rent anywhere because the clubs overseas always did that for me so yeah. signing a lease for the first time was wacky but i had to buy all of this stuff because i was making a basically a volley hostel like we called it a volley house yeah. where we put up a bunch of beds i would airbnb it when we didn't have camps and i would uh and i would put the campers in there when we did but if i didn't get a booking in the first month I was at zero, like I was at negative. So it was like that type of pressure of like constantly pushing the word out, constantly like having conversations with people saying like, you got to come and then building a whole Airbnb profile. And yeah. that, <laughs> that worked enough, but I, I was working to the bone for the first three years. Like I, I made the wrong assumption that since I have one apartment and it has two rooms every room that I have is worth this much. So then I rented another apartment um, because I was like, okay, if that create a little bit of cushion, this could create maximum cushion. What I didn't realize was that most people want their own Airbnb. They don't want it shared. Yeah. So that extra expensive one where I got a four bedroom now, that became like a money suck because people only wanted to do the full apartments, but then that also woke my eyes up to what we were going to do next and, and where we needed yeah. to go. So, um, I don't know you know, there was a lot of coaching and I was, I was playing on tour and every month, I think for five or six years, I was like, do we have enough to pay bills and do we have enough to pay rent? Okay. Good enough. You know, yeah. <laughs> cause oh, all yeah, I yeah. wanted to do was play volleyball and yeah. being a pro player, unless you're top, top four in the country it's not a full-time living yeah so um just gotta figure that out i guess <laughs> uh, i like uh, that's fair it's i think that people that's the other problem and i think that social media is really messing with with a whole crop of entrepreneurs or potential business owners because the minute that you use any hashtag you, you just get inundated with um, ads and cold DMs of coaches who coach coaches mm-hmm. telling you that you should be making $40,000 a month. 
in three months after starting your business and you're doing everything wrong if that's not what's happening. And I've really had to like step back and check myself because as much as I'm like, I think I, I, I feel like if I just keep going, I keep sticking with something, it's going to, it's going to grow. It's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. But then you see that. And if you see 10 of those a day, you, it's hard to not be like, but like, should I be doing something else? You know? And so I've had to check myself and just be like, no, like we are committed to, we're going to keep being consistent here. We're going to do good work. We're going to keep, you know, networking or get a coach or whatever. We're just going to keep going. Right. And so when I talk to people who are successful business owners, every single time they're like, if I'm like, well, I'm in the first year of my business, they're like, dude, you're doing fine. You're doing great. Oh, like killing it. Right. Because they've been through the first like five years and they're like, dude, I I mean, it it took four years to get here. You know, like, but if I talk to other people who are just new at their business, they're having the same same mentality where they're like, I, I just like feel like I don't know what I'm doing. And so it's, I always like hearing people who are successful in their business, who have been plugging away and doing it for years because, because it's the same story. I just kept showing up, mm-hmm. just kept doing the work. It took years, but those, like, you know, you know, those types of posts there, there's, there's good and bad to them because to me, I think the, sales psychology whatever to get you started to get you motivated to get you thinking mm-hmm. that a big reward is possible makes that barrier to actually start moving on it go quicker you know it, it at least you're like oh you know what i can do it and and you get that belief just because you see all those ads you see like yeah you know make a uh, I'm making six figures selling Amazon FBA and I'll show you how to do it in my, in my two week course. And all right, maybe that gets you started in FBA and and at least it gets you started. But then if you hang on to that promise um, that, that the sales and the, and the clickbait uses, yeah, you can't do that. Like once you get past that, once you get in the door, then it's time to put in the work. Like we tell college college athletes like hey you know you're the best on your high school team okay now you made it to college you you got a promise to play in a team in college it's not over this is where the work starts yeah like you did the bare minimum to get where you want to get don't get comfortable now is when it's time to go twice as hard yeah you know so I, i think there's good and bad to those to those ads but at least it it gets some people started even if it is a kind of empty promise there's some good in there so here's a here's here's another question for you i don't i honestly don't know i always do that i always preface questions like i'm going to say anything else on my own podcast but um you what you said at the beginning you're like you know i went to delaware because um it was the the harder path and you ever since i've known you you have always been kind of that mentality of like let's just go let's just try let's just see right and Mm -hmm with with that and this isn't like in general like you know fear of heights or whatever but with that when it came to you starting this business or you just pursuing a completely like I'm gonna go all in on this were there any fears or mindsets that you had to work really hard against no (laughs) I I'm (laughs) that sounds like maybe not no. so inspirational, but I was just like, no, no, you put in the work. You're not going to fail. Like you just yeah. go ahead and do it. Be, how could it fail? People want to go to California and play volleyball. Like it, 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 I don't know why I don't see a lot of downsides. You know, I, I, I've tried really hard to just say yes a lot and, yeah. and just go. So I, I don't, I don't often think of, of the downside of things. The only time that I've thought of that is like in real estate, I've got a few investment properties where mm-hmm. they they constantly warn like, okay, well, what's your backup plan if you're trying to flip a house, right? But you can't flip it or it doesn't sell. What happens then? Like, what's the next step? So all the properties that, that I've bought have been, um, I, I knew that I would be able to rent them for a profit if I couldn't successfully flip them or if a sale didn't happen in time. Yeah. So 
but it wasn't like, man, I'm, I'm going to screw up and think about all the negatives in real estate. Like there's only one way forward and it's by going forward. Do you think that you are, cause my guess is that, I mean, from knowing you, my guess is that that's kind of how you're raised and kind of innately who you are. Like, I think that you're just kind of a go, go, go and, and see and achieve type person. Yeah. Um, do you think I that don't think it was how I was the... raised though. Really? It was, well, there's, there's two, there's kind of two sides. Okay. My mom always said, follow your heart. Right. Yeah. She said, just, yeah, whatever you think, like check your gut, check in with yourself, pray on it. You know, follow your gut. Okay. Uh, and then any finance or business or anything like that, the only words that ever came from my mom and dad in that realm were warnings. Like it was wild that they supported everything, every decision, everything. And then when it came to like buying a rental property or flipping a house or starting a business, it was like, well, what if this, well, what if this? And that, that tripped me out a little bit at first. And then I remember like, I might make mom cry today because I said, mom, Hey, I love you. And you know, I always will, but this is, this is one area that I can't accept your advice in anymore because you you've never played on this field like she's she's never had an investment property she's never started her own business so she, she only hears the worst of what everybody else has gone through and that sticks out in her mind because psychologically negatives stick out more than positives for people um so i had i told her like i can't really accept your advice when it comes to this anymore you know i'll give you updates but i'm, I'm tired of the of the warnings because it's so unlike her you know? <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> like, I, I guess when I say like raised that way, my understanding of your home was because like you said, you have the older brothers, yeah. New York. I just kind of feel like, like, yeah, like your parents were kind of like, you got it, go do it. And your brothers were probably like, yeah, like, let's do it. Like show up, let's fight, let's wrestle, let's have fun. And there, I can only assume that when you have that much like seed planting and evidence and watering of like, if you go and you try at worst, you're going to have fun at best you succeed. Like I can only assume that that, that much evidence and that much practice in that space means that as you get older, it's just like kind of a part of you. It's like part of the nurture. There's gotta be something to that because I don't think I ever had, the opportunity to, to fail completely flat on my face. I know that I've said like back against the wall, but yeah. anytime, you know, I, I would try something. I knew that my whole family had my back and we always have each other's backs. Like I come from a very blessed life in, in that aspect that we have a tight family who loves each other, supports each other and talks, you know? So it, it, maybe that's, that's why I do some, some coaching and, and try to help people a lot is because at some point I realized, oh, not everybody had a crew of people who would, you know, drive to them at 3 a.m. at night, who would support them, you know, pick them, pick them up and get them out of a bad situation, whatever. But I always did. My, my family always had my back and I never, never felt any doubt in that. So that had to give me yeah. some confidence somewhere along the road. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like I, I absolutely. Um, for people who, cause like, yeah, I, let's just keep going with that. For people who have not had that and for people who are working on, you know what, I want to, I want to be able to just believe in myself. I want to be able to just go forward. My, what we've talked about so far, I feel as if the way you see things, maybe I have this idea, I want to go with it. And then it seems as if, but obviously correct me you are able to see the various paths different like the different roots uh how they sprout and then you're able to kind of I don't want to say flawlessly or whatever but it's not hard for you to adjust to each new path as opposed to I think a lot of people want to fight new paths because it's not the path that they decided was going to happen. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah. Or yeah. because they're we're they're 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 afraid that that path means failing. So like 
because what what sparked this thought was you saying um with the rental properties with the the, the, the real estate it was first time that you have to think well what if they don't sell but you're like but i mean if they don't sell i can definitely rent them so like it's i but maybe you did all of that research way before you even you like so what what do you think it is for you do you think that you do enough practice and research before you step into a new space that you are like, I can see the different paths and I can kind of predict how I want to do it, or I am prepared for doing it the different ways. Or do you think that when things life happens, you're not really afraid to be like, okay, I, I thought I was going to go right, but now I'm going left and that's cool. And we'll see what happens there. I, I think it's a little bit of both. Like when, when I hook onto something or I latch onto it, I just go really hard. Like when I came out to California and I was coaching, I was working my butt off. There's, so I got two stories. Um, I came out here and I, I was working hard coaching, playing pro ball, but not making a lot. Um, you know, playing professional volleyball does not mean that you're financially equipped in any way. Um, it could, but it doesn't necessarily. So I started driving around this neighborhood in, in LA called Palos Verdes, which is these big, beautiful, like green hills that look over the sea cliffs. And I saw how many houses there were on these cliffs that got to stare over the Pacific Ocean into the sunset every single day. And there are hundreds, thousands, and probably, you know, maybe hundreds of thousands across the world. And for whatever my reason, my mind like flipped on back to like standardized test scores in third, fourth, and fifth grade. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was like, and I was, I was good with books. So I was like 99% in the reading, 99% um, in the math. And I was just like, wait a second. So it can't be that there are this many people that are that much smarter than me. It just has to be where, like which button they're pressing. And one button like feeds out dollar bills and the other feeds out thousand dollar bills. Yeah. And that's when I started looking for ways to make money aside from like what I loved doing, which was the, the volleyball stuff. And yeah. I was like, okay, volleyball is not a money button for sure. It's not a money button. So what is a money button that I could press? And then I got hooked on real estate and started listening to probably hundreds of hours at this point of podcasts and, you know, reading those books and then getting enough information to go. So I got hooked on it and podcasting for me was then my school in business and real estate. Cause I never had any uh, of that. And so, so it is, it is preparation, but it, but it's reps, you know, when you, when you look at something and you want to go, it's not just going to happen for me. I, that's probably what I carried from sport. All right. You know, we're going to do this. Well, you got to work for it and you got to yeah. work hard and longer hours and more reps than anyone else is getting, you know, showing up to practice is again, the bare minimum that you can do showing up does not mean that you should be a starter does not mean that you're going to yeah. make the all-star team you have now created the minimum great now you have to get 10 times the reps of all of your teammates if you want to be the best of them yeah yeah but yeah. um to, to go back to the like the failure thing and and how i look at that i i wrote this article that was like one of my most read articles that, that i ever wrote and it was about the people who <laughs> I got off another phone call with somebody who's like, Hey, I'm thinking about moving out to California. And I was like, okay, what day? And he's like, Oh, well, you know, I don't have this set up. I don't have this set up. And you know, I want to make a little more. I was like, well, how much money uh, in your bank account until you think it's okay to come? And they're like, yeah. Oh, I don't know. And so they just kept making excuses. And I was just like, this is, this is the 15th conversation I've had like this. So I said, listen, everybody, it's not as if you're going to come out to California and then you're not going to find a place to live or you're not going to find a job. And then you're just going to lay in the middle of the Pacific Coast Highway and say, ah, I guess I'm going to die here. Like, you're <laughs> yeah. going to figure it out. Yeah. You know? yeah. So yeah. make the big jump. And then I promise you, you'll figure it out. It's why parents still chuck their kids into the deep end of the pool. Like, you're going to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so... I, one thing that when, when I started my, my opportunity coaching, I had created five pillars that I work with my clients on. Right. And I was going through it. And I'm like, I really like these. I really like them. But the whole time I'm like, there's, there's a second component here that I'm missing. 
And I don't know what it is yet, but there's a second component. And like, it sucks for my clients right now because they're not going to get it, but they'll get it whenever I figure it out. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've, I have figured it out and it's the, okay. So like you can be as self-aware as you want, but if you don't know how to actually implement it and, and, and tap into that power, then you're kind of just bumming around being like, I'm very self-aware and it's rather depressing. Right. And so the, the, (laughs) when I've been talking to, to people about tapping into their power and owning their power, one of the biggest things, and I am a, I am, I am very strict to myself. I do not tell a client any exercise or any idea or any like move that I personally have not done myself. Mm. Because if, if you're now, if I have to give you advice outside of me, I, I don't, that's water I don't know. And I would never just like chuck someone over there and be like, let me know how that worked out for you. Right. And so, so I, one of the things that I decided to begin doing with myself was I, I make decisions and then I own it outright, but the decision has been made. Uh, whether it's a bad decision or it's a good decision, doesn't really matter because if it's a bad decision, I'll figure it out. But yeah. when you kind of pussyfoot around in a decision, it's not a decision. It's, it's you just kind of wallowing and being really fearful and the door's half open, half closed, right? And so you don't actually make a decision. Nothing actually changes. You're not doing anything, mm-hmm. right? And so like when I originally, uh, three, I don't even know, four months ago, I was like, it's time to move. I'm leaving Denver and this I know for sure. And then I was like, I, I feel like it's definitely LA, right? And I started looking at places. Um, I, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm excited about this. I, I'm moving and this is great. And then I started pussyfooting around mm-hmm. with the idea of LA because I was doing what you're doing. I was like, ah. Do I, do, do I have enough money? Uh, it's going to be fine. I'll figure it out. I just need to find the right place. Uh, well, I'll figure it out. I mean, and I, I mean, admittedly, LA does not want a hundred pound dog or well, 135 pound dog, you know, like, um, so that was aggressively difficult, but I actually put the kibosh on it myself because I was like, Sarah, you are, you, you are not making a decision. You made the decision that you, it's time to leave. Mm-hmm. But you haven't made a decision about LA. Well, you think you have, but you haven't. Yeah. Because uh, if you did, you would be gone. Like you'd right. be there, right? Um. So I, I'm a big believer as well of like, like just make the decision and own the decision and then do it. Yeah. Like you will always figure it out. That's the real crazy thing about life. There's so much time in it, <laughs> like to figure it out. It's, it's for the workers you could figure it out. Yeah. I have a, uh, am I allowed to curse on your, on your podcast? Okay. Uh, we hand out bracelets, which uh, Brandon, uh, my business partner doesn't necessarily agree with, doesn't vibe with, but it was always, always, always my inner demon when it came to uh, getting more reps, pushing when I was tired, you know, and just going after it. And so I started, I started writing that on bracelets and people love it. And it's JFDI YFP. J F D I Y F P. And it means just fucking do it. You fucking pussy. Like my inner demon yells at me and yeah. he's like, you shouldn't be scared. Get it done. Like if, if you need to get two more reps in the, in the squat rack, like don't be scared. Don't be hurt. Just do it. Like, you know, you're yeah. going to do it. And that has come like that little demon that, that yells at me in a negative way. <laughs> um, he's, <laughs> he's pushed me through pain and through scary situations. And it's, it, it, sometimes it takes that amount of, of force, but, and not everybody can hear that and, Mm. and vibe well with that. So you can't tell that to like every client, but it it might give enough push to somebody who's like, yeah, what am I afraid of? Let's just go. You know? Mm. It's, I mean, that's why I love, I mean, this cult show up, right? Like, um, because, when I began changing how I talk to myself, how I talk to other people, my mindset around things, I realized the answer is pretty much just always show up. Like yeah. whether it's showing up for yourself, whether it's showing up for the business, whether it's showing up for someone else, whether it's showing like, you know, like it just doesn't matter. It just always drills down to like, like, what are you doing? You either show up or you don't. Yeah. You know, like, and it's, and it's show up as much as you can. And like showing up doesn't mean you work nine to five. 
it means that for three or four years while you're trying to play professional volleyball, you sleep four hours a night, you know, mm-hmm. because you're trying to build something, you're trying to get it all done. And yeah. if you're taking a, a break to eat, give, you gotta be kidding me. Like you should be <laughs> listening to a podcast while, while you're doing that. So don't tell me that you're giving it your all or that you're really trying. Like, let me see your, the little time chart that you've put together and how much time you're spending on <laughs> on instagram like like looking at posts that are telling you you're going to make 40 more thousand dollars instead of actually acting on those things <laughs> my my niece she was like uh, aunt sarah every time i call you're working when do you not work and i was like boo boo i don't there i don't think there's a there i don't know no i just don't so like just call me and you can sit and talk while i'm working because that's just what it is right now like yeah. I, well, and, and, and uh, not to backtrack too much, but you talking about your crew, like in your family, one of the biggest things that has ha- helped me with focusing on my business was having people around that completely understood that I want to give all of me to this business. Mm. It's really hard to pursue something when the people around you either don't grasp it or don't want to uh understand or they want to buy for for that time and that attention um all of my friends are if i'm like dude i just like like i want to see you but i really want to do nothing but work this week like okay cool you know like and and but in the past i have not had people like that and Mm. it makes a world of difference um yeah i'll tell you um, it gets what it's been it's been harder that's been the test of of uh honestly being being married i've been like i i am (laughs) i have to recognize that relationship should take as much reps work effort as anything else and and my mind has never flipped to that you know my my people have always been there automatically for me Mm -hmm. and now as as an adult i'm learning like no, you got to dedicate time to this too. You actually have to put like real time, real effort, real checks and standards for yourself in your relationship. And one of the things that, that I started measuring myself is like, all right, are you a plus or the minus in the relationship? And yeah. for your friends or the most important friendships to you and relationships to you, are you the plus or the minus? There is no in between. Yeah. Are you the plus or the minus? And if you're the minus, you work until you are 100% certain that you are the plus, you know, yeah. and it's not who's the better person. It's who's doing more for the other person and that striving for that makes you happy. But then it also pulls from relationship or relationship pulls from work sometimes. And then work pulls from like, sometimes your hobby interests. So there's a, there's a lot of measuring that you got to figure out. And oh, do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And like, what, and, and for me, like one of the things that I'm developing is, is, is this idea of the top 10%. And it's not you being the top 10% in your sport or business, whatever. It's you being in your top 10%. Mm. And how often can you actually achieve that? And, um, and you're, you're not going to achieve it every single day. However, it's, it, that's what it looks like. It looks like showing up to work and being there and doing everything that you can for the day with what you have and and where you are and then going home and being there and doing everything that you can for you know your partner or whomever and then going to the gym and being there you know like and it's a lot but that's also why not everybody is there just that little bit saves our relationship because we're both workoutaholics so like we at least have that hour to 90 minutes where we're together but if yeah. if she weren't fit crazy and i weren't fit crazy or well if i were still fit crazy and she weren't like then we'd miss another hour and a half apart yeah. and and it would just keep getting rougher but i think i think there's also time like building times you know mm-hmm. and then you can you can take that moment to like all right look what we did now let's now let's ride on it for a couple of weeks and take a nice trip together we're going out we're going to iceland for 10 days uh, coming up and then we're going straight to Ireland for an undetermined amount of time. And Ooh, who knows like after that. that? Yeah. I'm actually giving over, um, all business operations to Brandon and saying like, Hey, you've been to all yeah. the meetings. I've done everything I, I can show you. We've hired a team. You've got them. And I'm 
I'll, I'll be on like, I love beach volleyball. I think it does great things, but I'm, I'm bored of having beach volleyball conversations. And yeah. I think I have given everything of myself um, and every piece of knowledge I have is recorded. It's up somewhere. It's in a course. It's on YouTube. It's on Instagram. I've, I've put out everything there is to put out for, for beach volleyball. So now for me, it's, I want to have the more interesting conversations for my next development, which is uh, the next company is going to be called Entrepreneur Athlete. So nice. I yeah. like it. That's, I saw that. Okay. Um, we had the one question that was submitted. Um, <laughs> so the, and they, they said, um, <laughs> can you ask Mark what he was thinking when the Virginia Beach crowd asked for a sky ball when the game was about 22 21 against Chase Frischman, Avery Droust? Yeah, a, a, a Droust. Um, so I have a unique serve that only four or five people uh, in the world use in competition. And it's uh -huh. essentially you hit the ball as high as you possibly can. And it's, it's got a ton of spin on it. And most people think it's a joke or a gimmick um, or like super show off and cocky, but yeah. it wreaks havoc on people's yeah, offense when you can ball. get it going. It yeah. is. It's because the higher you hit it, the faster it's actually traveling on the way down. And because yeah. of um, how much spin it got, it has, it does, it lands nowhere near where you think it's going to land. So it like cuts hard and it cuts harder, the longer it's falling, you know? So it starts oh. traveling a further like lateral distance, the, the more it falls. And so it, it's because it's so unique, most people don't see that surf. And yeah. so they don't know how to stay in the system and it throws their offensive rhythm off a little bit. And now I'm playing pro and for better or for worse, I'm really only thoroughly enjoying myself on the court when there's a bunch of people watching and engaged. And mm -hmm. so if the fans like tell me to do something because, because they know it there. And then I think it's valid. I'm like, Oh, you know what? This is actually a good time to whip that out. Um, yeah, I'll do it. And the fans will go crazy and I'm having a better time playing volleyball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like when it, when it was a crucial part in the game and somebody was like, hit the moon ball, you know, I was just like, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then that person like texts me on instagram it's like i can't believe it it was so cool that like you pointed to me in the crowd and everything thank you it's great watching you and it's that's fun uh, i like it I, i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to go look for this ball because now i want to see it um and, okay so i finish all my podcasts same way um first question is how do you desire to better show up for others how do I desire to better show up for others? Oh, right now, I really only care about showing up for my wife. <laughs> um, that's really it. You know, I, I'm chasing pro ball, chasing building companies, chasing real estate, uh, having a family and friends that I've largely ignored. And then, and then uh, have, having a wife, it's like, I'm now my company's in a, in a, in a certain place where I can, dedicate time to her as soon as the season is done i can go full throttle on that and i'm really excited about that so showing up means according to her uh more date nights you know more time where it's just us talking to each other for me when we're doing activities together that's like i don't know, love language love language or whatever yeah. that's that counts for her it's it needs to be kind of sit down on a couch, nothing's on, just you and me. And um, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to, 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 to grow into like, yeah, if we go play mini golf, like that doesn't really count as you and me time. All right. Yeah, yeah we'll modify yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then how do you desire to better show up for yourself? For myself, um, a little extra sleep and more focus is, is the thing. That, I, that I'm really doing. Like I, I've got this little performance journal and it says, you know, list the three things you're going to get done today. And then a lot of business coaches say, great. Now cross out the last two, like <laughs> do yeah. one thing really well. Yeah. Uh, that's probably been a source of any form of unhappiness or stress that I've had is that I'm trying to go in so many directions. And again, I don't regret it at yeah. all. Um, but it makes for slower progression. And then because when you chase multiple goals, each goal grows slower. And when you see a snail move, 
you don't think he's moved at all. Yeah. You, you know, um, but if you chase one thing, it'll move fast and you get that reward, that internal reward of like, oh, look how much it grew instead of, oh, look at these nine things that grew one inch in a year. Yeah. It, there's a very different mindset that you have. And, and I think that now I'm getting to see all of those efforts. Like I just looked at my like net worth and what my properties are doing and, and where my company's at. I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. It, all this, this eight years, is, I, I kind of crushed it you know, (laughs) but it definitely doesn't feel like that along the way. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I like that. Well, um, good. I, I, those, both those answers are superb. So I love them. I love them for you. I love them for your wife. Um, I hope Ireland's ready for you guys. Thank you very much for, for being on the show. I, I really enjoyed this conversation. Yes, Sarah. We've always had great conversations. We always have. This is true. It's been great for from tea time in college all the way till to tea time and, and dinner in the dorms man those are great <laughs> oh my goodness yeah i'm gonna have to i will absolutely have to come out to la so we can do this in person um so it's not another 15 years or so so yeah <laughs> glad it's going um, well i have a good one thank you again um and and stay tuned for the next episode of show with sarah hey um,